Hello guys and welcome once again to Ariel's Noob DM channel. Um, today I wanted to take a break from uh, Dungeons and Dragons and talk about another one of my uh, really uh, old-time classic favorite um, RPGs and that is The World of Darkness by White Wolf Gaming which became popular in the 1990s and I thought what I would do today is I would um, if in case uh, people are not familiar with the game or whoever is not familiar with with uh, the world of darkness and vampire the masquerade uh, uh, to introduce this uh, uh, famous franchise because I sort of got in back into um, back into it uh, with uh, intentions of playing some maybe world of darkness games with my DD group in the uh, near future and I've been reading a lot of the clan book the old clan books that were put out by White Wolf. And um, back in 1996, they uh, made a TV show, a little known, well, it's kind of uh, a cult classic, I would call it that, but it's not It's not like, it wasn't very popular and it only lasted like eight episodes. And I, I recently watched all, all eight of the episodes and I'm kind of uh, upset or um, disappointed or um, uh, unhappy I don't know what the word is. I guess disappointed that they didn't make more episodes um, because it was it was a good uh, fantasy uh, vampire. It was kind of a weird show, and I can understand why it didn't really take off uh, because it was based on the role playing game uh, of the same name. Actually, the show was named uh, Kindred the Embraced. Kindred the Embraced, and um, that is um, because in the game. Um, the vampires don't call themselves as vampires. Vampire is a word that was invented by humans, uh, but they don't know that the vampires are around, or most of them don't know. A lot of people don't know, and um, they are they call themselves kindred, which means uh, family. And uh, kindred, the embraced um, in this universe of vampires, um, the vampires make other vampires. When a vampire uh, sires to use that terminology, when a vampire sires another vampire, um, then uh, they have to uh, um, kind of, uh, they don't kill them, but they sort of um, share some of their blood and their blood gets mixed into the other, the, the victim's system and they become vampire. But the interesting thing about the premise is that there's a bunch of clans of um, vampires and depending on which uh, uh, clan sires you, then you would be a totally different um, vampire than say somebody that got clan uh, got um, sired by another clan. So um, I'll explain a little bit more as we go through. Um, I'm not gonna go, maybe I'll make multiple videos. My idea actually was to, um, to uh, I also wanna start playing the role-playing game again. There's a, um, the video game rather, there's, it's not an MMO, but, but it's a um, RPG that was put uh, together um, in, and it's one of the better RPGs out there that you can play from the old school games. And it's called, um, it's based on this game, this role playing game, and it's called uh, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. And this game is pretty famous among gamers. And it's a really hard game. I gotta, I gotta be honest, because of the way the play style works. And what I wanted to do was, uh, I don't know if I'll have time to do it today or, or in the future videos, but I wanted to go ahead and, um, uh, the very first thing you do when you uh, boot up the game, and you can download it. Uh, I think I picked it up on Steam for like 10 bucks or less than 20 bucks for sure uh, a, a couple years back. And I started to play it, and then I kind of forgot about it because the game is hard. I guess I kind of gave up. But be that as it may, um, the very first thing you do when you uh, log into the ga install game and you 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 boot up the the, screen, the login is you have to choose you you take a survey. And this survey will determine what type of vampire you are or which clan you belong to. And I think that's an interesting way of, of making character creation. Um, but uh, I'll see if I can, honestly, um, it was hard to make a video with the, um, I wanted to go ahead and show that part and maybe I still can, but I have to figure out because it's one of those old DOS based games. So it takes up school, like a full screen resolution, even to do the, um, to do that. And then I'd have to somehow manage uh, switching the camera from um, that into the, there's a whole logistics of, of recording that. So I'll figure that out. 
But in the meantime, I'm going, I want to talk about five of the third. There are 13 playable plants in the game of uh, Vampire of the Masquerade. Uh, by the way, there's a new version that came out. They keep upgrading it or updating it for, for modern times. And in 2004, they came up with a, uh, a revised version of the game, which was actually, um, I think, originally from the 90s. And then in, um, in 1996 or even earlier. And um, and then there are also, um, uh, uh, there's 13. They keep up upgrading it. But in the original game, there was 13 clans that you could play because you couldn't really play as a human, um, they were mostly like uh, no NPCs. So the whole point was to actually be, uh, play uh, as uh, the PCs were to pick one of the 13 clans. And in the show, they only use, I guess because Hollywood, you know, a narrative, it, it would have been, it was too confusing to have all the clans in there. So they decided to just um, use five of the clans. Um, and I'll talk more about the show, but right now, uh, I'm going to focus on the five that were in uh, in the uh, in the original show. If you want to watch Kindred and Berries, by the way, it's an easy Google search. Um, some people have uploaded full 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 uh, episodes, which is how I saw them, and there's only like eight of them. So um, it's, it's again, it's a shame that they didn't move forward. But um, in the show, they have uh, five clans, in, uh, starting with the Ventrue clan, and I'm going to talk about Ventrue first, and then move on to the others. All right, guys, we're starting off with the, here's the clan book for the Venture, and um, it's uh, by uh, Richard Dakan, and it talks about um, just the history, um, the um, the history of the, the of the clan. You got some really cool artwork there, as usual, in these RPG um, type of mo uh, adventure modules, as well as uh, setting books. Um, but the Venture are basically, the way I think of them, they're kind of like the regal clan. They're sort of like um, a, a, uh, the uh, kind of like the upper echelon or the um, uh, royalty. I don't know how best to describe them. They're sort of like they definitely think of themselves as better than the other clans in terms of status, in terms of um, economic, and you know. So a lot of them, like in the show, for example, um, they didn't really stick. Uh, to their powers too much, like they do in the book, because uh, all the vampires pretty much had um, the same uh, the same uh, powers, which was different in the game. So they, Hollywood changed that um, for narrative and story purposes. But um, as you can see here, there's um, a member of the Ventru clan showing uh, in front of a, a, a city landscape, because they could be um, CEOs or in business and um, and you think of like um, think of like a, a, a James Bond type character too, where they're very sophisticated and they're very um, uh, you know they don't wear like rag rag ragged clothes or ratty clothes or you know they look pretty proper and so they um, they think of themselves as um, very close to humanity. It, well, in the show itself, in Kindred Dream Race. Um, they are closer to humanity because they're able to pass off as humans. They don't necessarily, in order, the, the show is called, uh, and the game is called Vampire the Masquerade because the masquerade is uh, in order for the vampires to be able to live uh, with humans without being persecuted or hunted by humans, they have to kind of blend in the world. And it's easier for the Ventrue clan, Ventrue members to blend in because they don't have, um, they don't have a uh, a kind of like monstrous type, you know, the Nosferatu uh, type, uh, monster type uh, uh, features, you know, kind of think of like the X-Men and where some uh, mutants, uh, if you want to make an, uh, an allegory, some mutants are, are not um, able to readily go out into the world because they look like monsters, but there's other mutants that their mutations are a little bit more refined or a little less extreme sort of the same concept. So the Venture are able to um, to do that and um, and to uh, to integrate with human society. Um, they're Cain's chosen. Uh, the Venture, which Cain is basically the father of all vampires in the game um, or one of the uh, early vampires. So the Venture, uh, and the, the book says the Venture claim to have to fame the, the Venture's claim to fame begins quite literally in the beginning. The most reliable sources state, it's fir state this firmly. Cain ordered 
his children to beget the third generation, he specifically chose Ventrue as the first. In fact, he demanded that Yonish, em, uh, Yonish embrace uh, only to sweep the fledging kindred from his sires away and place by his side. So it gives kind of like a, um, a history of the clan. But as you can see, um, uh, during the warrior ages, I think what's cool about this too is because vampires are immortal, right? Uh, if they don't get destroyed, um, they can live forever. And uh, they've been around since the dark. There's actually a, a version of the game that I like the best because it incorporates like Middle Ages and it's called uh, Vampire uh, the Masquerade Dark Ages. And Dark Ages is actually the first game that I played before even the Masquerade um, or the, you know, the regular Masquerade. And it was great. And as you can see with the, by this um, uh, artwork, they were warriors of, for the ages. So um, just because they're sophisticated, vampire clan does not mean that they have lost their warrior mentality uh far from it they're pretty formidable fighters and um in the show um they got the ventru are able to hold their own with um some of the other vampire clan clans so they're able to fight because of this history um but anyway that's that's kind of a little bit of an overview of, of what the ventru clan is all about okay guys so um from the ventru we go on to the nosferatu the Nosferatu are complete extreme. Um, they, unlike the Ventru, they cannot um, really interact. I was talking about how they, uh, the Ventru can interact with humans, but Neferatus, they cannot because they are the monster type vampires that you see in classic um, Hollywood films. You know, uh, uh, the Nosfer there's a, the movie Nosferatu, um, and it's like basically they're like the monster type vampires. Vampire clan, so it's pretty self-explanatory, you know what their what their history is like, and um, what they um, what they are. Um, what I like about this uh, clan books too is they have some. Not only do they have the history of the clans, but they give you like some fairly good uh, description and sometimes little short stories, so that it can be clear how you would play or how you would role play. The diff if you happen to be, uh, whether you're doing the tabletop or the video game, the video game does the same thing where you, how you, how they differ between the clients. And that was one of the things that was kind of disappointing about the show. Yes, they did have um, clans in the show. And like I mentioned, they narrowed it down from 13 to just five. Although you did see like the Asimites, which is another clan, and they made a brief appearance towards the end. So there's actually... Um, um, five or six of the clans, but the main clans in the show are like the five clans, which are the Ventru, the Nosferatu, the Grangel, the uh, Grangel, um, the, uh, the Bruja, and the uh, Toreador. And we'll take a look at those as well. Um, but basically, um, uh, the uh, Nosferatu are, um, they live underground. Uh, again, to do another X-Men comparison, um, because I think uh, a lot of fiction borrows ideas from each other and i don't know if chris claremont or some of the x-men people um they, they came first so i don't know if this show um the writers of this of the show based on the game or the game the game developers came up with this con similar concepts but in the x-men um because there's a race or a type of mutants that are very um are not able to uh interact with humans because they look horrific, they look like a monster. So they live underground, and I think they're calling them the Murlocs. So the Murlocs, not to be confused with the little monsters from World of Warcraft, <laughs> but the Murlocs from um, from the X Men, they all live underground, and they um, they have to hide from humans. And it's kind of the same idea for the uh, Nosferatu. Um, uh, a hosting of historians, we are legend for time memorial. Our history has been passed down as stories and tales from one generation to the next. As we crouch in darkness, hiding from the world above, so they, they live below, we pass gossip, trade secrets, and most importantly, tell stories to pass the long nights of immortal, immortality. So um, millennia before the kind of his di di digital age developed, their short attention spans distracted by sound bites, infomercials, 22-minute sitcoms, and commercial jing jingles are neonates our neonates learn to memorize the saga of our clan, the children history of the world, just, to have, just as we have hidden our disfigured faces from the human race for all time, so have we hidden our legends. 
So um, the show Kindred the Embraced follows the same idea or the same conceit. So I think they picked the Nosferatu as one of the clans because they're so different from the, all the other clans. And there could be a lot of story elements from that. Um, although in the show, you only really see like the main leaders of the clans. So they have a conclave and in the conclave, they have the leaders of the five clans and they're always fighting against each other. Um, the leader of the Ventura clan, who's like the main protagonist of the show, he wants to keep the, the, the peace between the clans and he wants to protect the masquerade because he correctly um, theorizes that if the humans ever find out that the vampires exist or that the kindred are real and not uh, mythology, that they would come after them, which is exactly what, what um, would happen and does happen in some instances. So, um, uh, uh, meanwhile, there's so there's a lot of inner battles and inner inner clan uh, tension that comes from the game, and it trans that's the part of the show that kind of translates really well. The inter uh, clan uh, fighting between the different clans. Um, the disappointing thing is that because they only made eight episodes, part of it was because they went on summer hiatus, and the lead star, um, the ratings were not very good. But the guy that played the lead role in the show, who was the leader um, or the prince, the, the, San, the prince of San Francisco, because um, the clans all have different territories, uh, demographics. So there's a there's a prince of San Francisco or a prince in Los Angeles, and they all rule different um, secretly. They all rule rule their own clans. Well, the guy the guy that played the prince of San Francisco died in a in a motorcycle accident. So that's one of the reasons they stopped making the show, which is a shame. They didn't make a second season. Which would have been interesting to see how we, if we, but they did have a lot of stories involving a couple of stories in for, involving the Nosferatu and how they, their philosophy is different from the Ventru and the other clans in the show. So um, it was really good that at least they got able, they were able to pick them because there are more. I think the reason they picked them was I was going to say because they're a more visually arresting. Obviously, if you have a monster type vampire, that's going to be a, a a very memorable visual, even though. Um, you don't see them a whole lot. You just see the leaders and the leaders are, you know, they're more kind of like less, less horrific. Um, I don't know if it was because of the makeup budget or they didn't have enough resources, but they don't really look good until like one, one, one episode in the, at the very end of the show where it's all focused on the Nosferatu clan. And the last clan we're going to talk about today, because this video is getting kind of long. So I'm going to split them up into different parts again just to uh, you know, just have it concise. And, uh, but the last clan that we're gonna talk about is the um, Bruja clan. And um, the Bruja clan, I would have to say, it's probably my least favorite. I don't, it's my least favorite of the clans, um, not in the game per se, but in the show, because um, the way that they are portrayed in the, um, in the game is basically the Bruja are sort of just like, they're sort of like anarchists. So if you see that that little symbol that looks like an honor, uh, like an anarchist um, upside down uh, symbol, so they don't really follow the law. They're not. They're kind of like rebels. Um, they do their own thing, and um, they're kind of like a holes, really. When you think about it, they don't get along with the humans, and they don't they don't get along with the other vampires either. And that's kind of the premise of what they are. But because they're so problematic. Um, they made them sort of be the um, the antagonists or the bad guys in the show, um, and um, which would have worked okay, except that um, they completely changed their look, and um, you know um, they sort of in the sh in the game that they, they look like rebels without a cause type of deal, you know, anarchists. Um, but in the show, they're portrayed more like mafia mobs, like mobsters. Um, a lot of the clans are actually portrayed, portrayed like the Ventru and the Bruja um, are sort of like uh, uh, gang, gangs going after gangs of New York type of thing or, or gangs of uh, fighting in, in because it makes sense from a storytelling perspective or from a narrative, you're going to have different clans in a city that might work. Um, the problem with that I have with that is that they don't, they're already not really showing you their um, powers all the time in the books. They have a lot of different abilities. And um, if I remember correctly, um, the RPG is very skills based, or at least at least the video game is very skills based as well, which is based on the tabletop. So you pick a clan and your clan will have 
um, different skill. You can pick different skills for your uh, for your p uh, player character. But in the show, they can all do the same things. Like they all transform into bats or wolves or animals, and they all can fight. And you know, it's very uniform. There's not a whole lot of distinction. It's really it's sort of kind of hard to tell um, what the different clans, which characters belong, unless you're in unless you're following along like a whole narrative. And they do say a lot of times, well, you're Bruja or um, you're, you're, you know, you're a Ventru and you think this way. Or, but they don't really show it. It's more of like um, show us, don't tell us type of thing. And I think the show kind of fails in this regard where the video game does a lot and the, and the tabletop does a lot better job, in my opinion, of uh, showing you, you know, what the differences are what the distinction distinctions are between because you know a bruja is going to be evil um it's going to be um uh unconventional they're not going to get along with the humans um which they don't in the show they don't really care about the humans either but they're portrayed more like territorial where they're trying to take over like the main one of the main conflicts in the show not to spoil a, a, anything big but it's it's a it's a th theme it's a thematic choice that you see from the very first episode where the ventru are fighting uh, the bruja are trying to take over um the one this one one bruja leader uh, of the clan is trying to take over as as from the other prince uh, the prince of san francisco who's the main character and he wants to be prince and so it's more of like a, a territorial animalistic territorial conflict um which gets sort of translated into uh, gangs versus gang warfare type of thing uh, which would work okay except like if you're going to do that then you know, you take away from some of the supernatural elements that makes the vampires pretty fun to watch, I think, or to, you know, in the in the game, it's pretty clear, you know, you're going to role play uh, a clan member or a type of vampire, and depending on the clan that you choose or the clan that is chosen for you, um, then, uh, you know, you're, you're, you have a pretty much a roadmap for how to behave, but in the show, it's not really clear, um, and I get why they do that, because, uh, A, they're trying to hit a key demographic and they're trying to incorporate a mass audience um, where the game is more, the game is more focused on this, you know, role-playing nerds to just, just to say it that way, the role-playing nerds that love horror and that love gothic horror and um, are, are really getting into the nitty gritty and the details of um, what the clans look like, what the different pirate vampires uh, do, uh, where the show is just, you know, it has to kind of capture a wide audience, but I think it didn't really know what it was going for, or it didn't have a good adaptation. Unfortunately, it's a good show. I still, it still has some very interesting elements to it. But I think it would have been way more successful had they stuck a little bit more um, to the original premise of the program, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, but to get back, the Bruja are anarchists. They don't work well. They don't play well with others, as. Um, Spike once famously said on Buffy, um, but um, or was it Buffy who said it? I don't play well with others. I forget. <laughs> I'll have to rewatch that episode. But anyway, I digress. Uh, they the the Bruja don't get along with the other clans. It's basically it, and so that's why they made were made the bad guys in the show. Although I don't think they fully translate from their um, RPG um, counter counterparts or their original. Uh, RPG origins. All right, guys. Well, we've come to the end of yet another video. I thank you for watching. Um, I uh, hope you enjoyed this first initial look. Um, if you're not familiar with the world of darkness, if you've never played or heard of Vampire the Masquerade, I highly recommend both the game, um, whatever version you enjoy. There's multiple versions out there. Um, like I said, there's the, the original tabletop version that came out in the mid 90s. Um, and there's also Vampire the Masquerade, the Dark Ages, which is more focused on um, the Dark Ages. So, you know, uh, it has more of somewhat of a um, medieval uh, uh, medieval sensibility to it. And there's two video games that came out of it. One, uh, the better one, is called, uh, as I said, uh, Bloodlines, back, Ma Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which came out in 1998, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the one that I'm going to be playing, uh, going back to and see if I can get further into the game. It's a really hard game just because the way they designed it. Um, and I'll talk about that in the future if you want, if, if that's something you that would appeal to to um, people watching this. 
Um, so I'll talk more about the game, it's the game itself and more of the clans um, at a later time. So if you like this content, don't forget to uh, hit the like and or um, subscribe because it helps me keep the channel going. And until then, um, this is also a uh, RPG game where you roll dice. So um, uh, similar to D&D &D and a lot of the other um, tabletop RPGs. So may the rolls be with you. Peace.